Hey everyone, how are you? Uh, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Okay, welcome today to our YouTube channel. Uh, we will be doing a live stream and we will be taking off reinforcements uh, for concrete and beam. For concrete, reinforcements and formwork for beams, columns and slabs. So, welcome so much. Uh, for all who are viewing, uh, we are almost starting. So maybe you can tell us if you're in class today and where you're listening us from. I don't see if there's anyone online. Maybe you can just say hi, then we shall start. <laughs> okay, so we shall start. Um... We shall go to our notes today. Uh, the presentation will be about taking off quantities for slabs, quantities, and how to take those quantities in the BQ. So, um, for our class today, we'll be learning about preparation of BQs and taking off sheets. Okay, so uh, we all know what it is, what a BQ is. We know that a BQ is a document which lists all the items necessary for the complete construction of the works. So, uh, a bill of quantity is that document which has all the items that should be there in a construction site, everything that shall be used in the construction, then uh, it should be costed, so that the total cost of that, all those items shall give us the total cost of the building. Uh, we all know the functions of a bill of quantity. I don't want to go to that. I want us to go direct to uh, estimation of the concrete and the reinforcements and the formwork. So we will just look at a few pictures here. Uh, if you can see in these pictures, they are showing how concreting is usually done. Uh, for example, this uh, picture here, uh, I need to highlight it on my screen. Uh, it shows that, let me just check my pen yes the picture here shows concrete being done on the slab let me change the color of my pen to red so that it can be visible okay yes this uh the first the first picture here we can see concrete being done on the slab we can see the reinforcement bars then you can see concrete being poured then on the second one you can see a man with a vibrator uh working on the concrete uh, we can see in the third picture curing being done so that concrete can dry. And in the in this picture here, we can see um, a, com a, a column stamp having been uh, concreted. They are just examples of how concrete uh, will appear. All right. So uh, when we go to reinforcements, uh, reinforcements are usually done in different uh, shapes depending on where they'll be done. There are usually basic formulas for calculating the length of reinforcements that we shall use. Uh, for example, when we are doing uh, things like slabs, we need to use hooks when we are joining reinforcement bars so that they can be uh, held together. How do we determine the size of these hooks? Uh -huh. We usually have uh, formulas like this one that says that H is equals to 9D. So uh, whatever the diameter of this bar will be, uh, this size of the hook, this length h should be 9 times the diameter of the bar. So in case we say like it was a d8 bar, we shall say 9 times 8. Uh, in case it was a d12 bar, it will be 9 times 12. So that d is the diameter of the bar, then l is the length. So the length here is denoted by l. Uh, if we want to know the size that we shall add after the size L to add to the hook, uh -huh, we will take 90. All right. So um, for the bends, you see this one is a hook because it takes this shape. Now we could have a bend. If we have a bend, we shall uh, be able to calculate the, the length of H as 5D. D meaning the diameter of the bar. L is the length. All right. So if you want to know the uh, measurement from here to here, which is N, N shall be calculated by 3D. These are basic formulas that we shall use to 
uh, know the length of the reinforcement bars. Uh, this one is for milled steel. Then we usually have another one for the tensile steel. High tensile steel, it usually have different uh, formulas for this. So uh, once you want to know the length, uh, if you're using all these, you need to know these formulas of calculating the length. So what we'll be changing is only the diameter of the bars. All right. So uh, we ha also have a detail here. Uh, it is showing how reinforcements are usually laid in the columns. Uh, you can see like here, it's a footing, a column footing. Uh, it, we are showed very well how reinforcement bars are usually tied at the footing, how they uh, come and uh, join up with the ones that are uh, vertical on the stamp. Let me zoom in so that you can be able to see. Uh -huh, it's a bit clear. Then we have like this one is the ground beam here. This this one. If we are showed how the ground beam comes into the column. All right, you can see how the bends usually come in the reinforcements that are tied straight. Okay, so if this one, this, all this is the footing we are showed here. Then we have this footing reinforcement, they are below here. Then we have uh, reinforcements that are connecting beams reinforcement. Uh, these ones are the star wraps, all right? Uh, the ones that are going round, okay? Then we have the column. We have the footing again, another footing. Then the footing has reinforcement. I am just showing you the details so that uh, when you are taking off, you can be able to understand uh, very clearly. Uh, we also have in a beam how reinforcements are usually tied. They usually have bends that come inside the beams. You can all see these ones. Eh? Uh -huh. So uh, we are showed uh, there are usually some that are up here. There are some that are down. They are tied together with the, by the star wraps. Okay, then um, they come into the column because uh, beams distribute the load to the columns. Now, the detail in the beam, uh, this one is the star wrap. If the beam is 200 uh, millimeters wide, okay, uh, we usually have the reinforcement inside there. We are showed how the reinforcement should be, uh, should be curved, should be folded, <laughs> should be. Okay, uh, this way, the reinforcement, the star up, usually, we usually bend that uh, reinforcement. Uh, we have shown that the width of the beam is for 50. Uh, the width of the beam is to 50. Uh, so the width of the reinforcement bar is 200 because uh, the reinforcement bar should not be seen outside the beam. There should be some cover. You see, uh, when we have concrete, and we have reinforcements. The, reinfo the concrete comes inside the reinforcement. Then we should have a concrete cover outside the reinforcement so that the reinforcement cannot be exposed to weather conditions. You see, when it's hot, the reinforcement could expand. When it's very cold, the reinforcement could contract. So we usually uh, use concrete and uh, reinforcements when we are doing when we are doing concreting, but uh, the reinforcement should always be covered. That's why uh, when you walk inside a building, a high-rise building, maybe you're going to fast flow, you'll never see a reinforcement. But it doesn't mean that the building doesn't have reinforcement. But just the thing is, they usually have a cover. So every time that we are calculating for reinforcement, we should remember we should always leave some space between the size of the beam that we want and where the reinforcement should be. All right? So uh, in this one, we can see that up here, we have two reinforcement bars. You see these dark circles that you can see here? They are the upper reinforcement bars, okay? If you see two dots up here, they are reinforcement bars up here. They are two. If you see four below here, we are showed that they are, they are four reinforcement bars. And you see a section is usually cut like here. Once a section is cut, when we cut a section here, we usually view it from the front. So what we are seeing from the front is a reinforcement bar running away. This one, we can see it from the end. It's running this way across the beam. But we are viewing it from here, from the front. Okay. Then we have um, the ones below here. We can see there are four. So... Um, we can see we are viewing it from below here as in from across here it's a section 
So we can see that there are four bars below. Then there are two bars above. Then they have a star wrap tying them together. So um, remember if you have any questions, kindly we'll be looking at your questions. I will be glad to answer them. Yeah, so in case you have a question, I'll write it in the comment section and we shall be able to, to answer it. Alright, so um, we have the slab here. The slab, this is an example of how reinforcement bars will be looking in a slab. If you can see clearly, uh, the, the slab has reinforcement bars running like this from one direction to another. Then we have, uh, they are forming a mesh. Then we can see our column come from below, it's going up. Then we have beams cut across the slab. I hope all this you can see. So uh, we are just understanding the details so that we can be able to calculate reinforcement. This is how um, the reinforcement in slabs are usually are. Uh, we have a mesh below there. Then once they come, uh, they they cut they come straight. You see, they are coming from here. They cut across. They come into the beam and into the beam this other side. Then the ones that are running this way, they will run into the beam this side and into the beam this side. Right. So uh, this is an example of, of how reinforcement will be in a column. In a column, we have these uh, star wraps. These star wraps, they are tying the vertical reinforcements that are standing in. Then their column is usually passing inside the beam they usually come in together they link up with the beam because all the structure as in all the structural components should come to be one so that the house can be strong okay we can see here an example of how the startup should be done uh, mostly we find people uh, tying the, the the reinforcement bars to be like this so it, we are told this is wrong it should have an angle of 135 this is the correct one here yeah. So a startup, a typical startup, which is correct, uh, and it's uh, how it should supposed to be, is like this one. Uh, it should have the hooks, and uh, they should come with an angle of 135 degrees. If we have a beam, which is 300 by 300, here we have the cover. The space between the, the reinforcement and the end of the beam, we should have a cover all around. You can see uh, all that space that is left is the, is the cover. We can be able to see here clearly how we achieve the cover is that we use these uh, these spacers when you are doing the slab. So the reinforcement bars, we lift them up using the spacers so that when you do concreting, the concrete can go below there. Then the reinforcement can be at the center of the concrete. Then we are showed here very clearly, this is the link bar for the star wraps. Then we have like this one, we have two reinforcement bars on top here. Then we have four bars below here. And we have two below, then two above. So like this one, you are told, these two bars, they are 10 millimeters. But below here, we have uh, four bars, which are, uh, we have other two bars, which are 12 millimeters. So they are a total of four. We have this one, one, two, three, and four. They are millimeters so in this uh, beam we have four bars that are four millimeters of course they are running across then we have two bars that are 10 millimeters uh, this is an example of a of a spacer no 50 millimeters footing cover uh-huh uh, that's a Let's go to pad footing. Uh, pad footing, it's used in a column. The column, the, the reinforcement bars are vertical. Then we have the pad footing below here. The reinforcement bars are tied. Uh -huh. We can see a very good example there. If we have a pad footing and the ground beam is uh, passing through, you can see how they interact. The, the reinforcement bars for the column and the, for the for the ground beam uh this one there is a point i want you to note uh if you look closely uh on this one eh, the reinforcement bars that are coming from above here they usually lie on the mesh below here so uh these ones they lie on this mesh below here 
Then once we have these bends, they are tied towards the, the ones that are straight. So we shall tie them together. Alright? Then these ones will go past. Then if we have the ground beam, it will come and pass through the column. Alright? So because everything, all the reinforcement should be tied together. Because they are the strength determinants in a building. Alright, that one we have already finished. So we shall go directly. Uh, these are just examples of how formwork is usually done. We all know that we have first to lay the formwork, then we do the reinforcement, then we finish with the concreting. This is an example of how we'll be able to, to, uh, to do formwork in a staircase. We do the formwork, we do the reinforcement, we do the formwork again up here so that it can be able to, to shape the the risers, uh -huh. we can see the formwork uh, here, uh, we have the concrete, how we do it in a column, these are just examples, uh, so that you can be able to relate, so that now we shall go directly to calculation of concrete work, reinforcement, and formwork for slab. Uh, slabs are the easiest things, that we, is the easiest um element that we can do take off for because it's not complicated and it does not use a lot of a lot of uh, reinforcement and formwork i want to to open uh, our live stream so that i can see if you have any questions or you have any feedback so that we can continue all right so Mm -hmm. uh, we shall start with this example here. Okay. Uh, the example that we have, we are told to prepare taking off sheets and bill for the slab shown in the figure below with the thickness of the slab uh, 300 millimeters. The dimension sheet shall include concrete work, mass concrete for the slab, and reinforcement bottom only. Concrete cover is 25 millimeters. All right. Now we are told to take off the sheet and build for the slab, just as it's shown below. Then uh, we are showed the picture of the slab. We are told that the length uh, for this slab shall be 4.3 meters. The width shall be 3.5 meters. Okay. So, and then we have this reinforcement bar here. This one, it is T10 and it has a spacing of 100. So, from one uh, reinforcement bar to another, the spacing should be 100. Then, uh, they should be, diameter should be 10 millimeters. Okay? So, these reinforcement bars run across this slab up to a point here. Remember, we are starting from here because we said we have to have a concrete cover. Then we have these other reinforcement bars here. The diameter is 12 and they have a spacing of 200. When you're given like this, such an example, you need to determine the number of bars that are running this way. In a slab, we say that the reinforcement bars form a mesh. All right. So we are told the concrete cover is 25 millimeters. So from the ends, we shall expect that we shall have a spacing of 25 here, then a spacing of 25 here. We shall have a spacing of 25 from the end and 25 from the end. So when we shall be determining the number of reinforcements, we shall take the space between one reinforcement bar to another. Then we shall divide by 100. Then we shall add 1. The space divided, the total distance, we divide by the spacing plus one. Okay, if when we want to determine how many reinforcement bars are here, we shall take uh, the space between the, the uh, reinforcement bar at the end here and the one at the end here. Then we divide by the space plus one. Okay, we had been told to prepare a taking off sheet and a bill. After taking off, we shall feed it in the bill of quantity for the slab that is shown below with a thickness of 300 millimeters okay the dimension sheet should include concrete work that is mass concrete for the slab and reinforcement for bottom only so we are told to take off for bottom only we should not 
uh, you know, in a slab, we usually have those ones that are going up to the end, then coming back. We are told to take on off only for the bottoms. So we'll only form the mesh at the bottom. So how we'll go about it? We shall take uh, the total length of the slab. The total length of the slab is 4.3 meters. Then we have the width of the slab is 3.5 meters. Then uh, the thickness of the slab we have been told is 300 millimeters. Now, right now, we are taking off the concrete. The concrete is measured in meter cubic. It, we, are, we are measuring the volume of the concrete. So we shall take the total length of the slab, total width of the slab, and the thickness of the slab. That one will give us the volume of the concrete. Okay, so how we shall feed it in the take of sheet? It shall be 4.3, then 3.5, then 0.3. I hope uh, you can keep up with the pace of the script. Uh, if, in case there are any issues, uh, just alert me. All right. So uh, when we shall square it, we shall take 4.3 times 3.5 times 0 0.3. We shall get 4.52 meter cubic. So the concrete work, uh, we shall start with concrete work. Mass concrete shall be, uh, we have written the dimensions here. So this is the answer. Then uh, we shall go to the reinforcement. If you can see the reinforcement, we have been told they are T12 with a spacing of 200, then T10 with a spacing of 100. Okay, so how we shall go about it is that we shall start with the reinforcement. The re reinforcement uh, at the bottom. We know that in a slab, we usually have the, dis the, the, we have the, the main bars and the distribution bars. The main bars are these ones that are carrying the weight and they are usually located at the bottom. Then we have the distribution bars which are on the longer side, then they are found on the top. So we shall start with those ones at the bottom. So T12 are bars which have a spacing of 200, they are found at the bottom. So uh, they, we shall have them having a bend because uh, they are the ones at the bottom. We usually do a bend mm -hmm. so the length of the of the of the reinforcement bar 4012 we shall take the total length of the slab you see are uh, these 212 bars they are running uh, like this eh? they are running like this then uh, they are going within the shorter span mm -hmm. so uh, we shall take the total length which is the total length of the slab is 4.3. Then we shall deduct the concrete cover, which is 25 on both sides. Okay. Then we shall add the bed. Uh, we say there are basic formulas for calculating uh, the bends, the length of the bends. So uh, we shall take 4.5. This one is 4.3, uh -huh, the length. We shall deduct uh, the cover. The cover. The cover is 25 millimeters on both ends. So if we take 4.3, then we deduct uh, 0 0.25 times 2, which shall be 0 0.05. So the length 4.3 minus 0 0.05, we shall remain with 4.250. Then we shall add the bend. The formula for calculating the length of the bend is usually 5.5D uh, on each end. Then we have two ends because you can see the bend is uh, like a U. So the bend is at the end here and at the end here. So uh, two, two ends, then one end it has 5.5 D for the bend. So it shall be the two, the two ends, then 5.5 uh, D, the diameter of the bars, they are T12, 12 millimeters. Okay. So we shall take two times 5.5 times 0 0.012. So we shall find the total length of the band as 0 0.132. So uh, when we want to find the total length of that reinforcement bar, we shall take the total length, we deduct the covers, then we add the bands, and we shall get 4.382. How many bars shall, shall be there for the T12? For the T12, uh, we shall take uh, the total width was 3500, then we deduct uh, covers, for both sides, we get 3450 
because uh, the number of bars we say they'll be from the bar at the end to the bar at the end we take that distance so we have taken the total wind was that 500 we have deducted the covers we got 3450 then we divide by the spacing of these bars you see t12 has a spacing of 200 so 3450 divided by 200 we get 17.25 17.25 there so uh if there are 17.25 bars so we shall say to the next whole number is 18 so how many bars of t12 will be there there'll be 18 bars whose length is 4.38 remember how we have uh determined the length of the bar we have taken the total length we have deducted the cover then we have added the beds because uh, the, the reinforcement bars being at the bottom, they are usually U-shaped. So we have the reinforcement bar here, it's a U. So we have taken 4.3, we have deducted the covers, we have got 4.250, then we have added the bends. And you have seen the formula for the bends is 5.5D on each end. Then each bar has uh, two ends. So we have uh, got 0. 132 so the total length of the bar the length plus the bend we get the total length of each bar then to determine the number of bars we have taken the space sink between one bar to the other then we have divided by the by the spacing of the bars then we should add one actually here we should add one 17.25 plus one so it should be 18.25 so here it should be 19 not that one eh? because every time we should take the distance we divide by the spacing then we add one all right let's go to the other reinforcement which is the t10 which has a spacing of 100 how do we determine the length of this bar then how many bars just like the other one we shall take uh, the length on which it is running you see this t10 bar it's running uh, from here to here but we have to leave a, a cover on both ends. So it shall be 3.5. Then we deduct 25, 25. Okay. So it will be 3.5. We less two covers on both ends, which is 0 0.050. So the total length of that bar shall be 3.45. Then we shall add the bends. Each bend is 5.5D. So if we have two bends, it shall be 2 times 5.5 D. So 2 times 5.5 times the diameter, which is, if it's T10, that is, the diameter is 10, 0 0.010. So we shall have the total length of that reinforcement bar at the bends is 0 0.275. So what is the length of the whole reinforcement bar? We shall take quite straight, plus the bend, we get 3.725. Then how many bars? We shall take... Uh, if the bars are running this way, they are distributed from here up to the other end here. So we shall take 4.3, we deduct the covers on both sides, then we divide by the spacing plus 1, alright? So we shall take 4300, which is the length of the length, we deduct uh, the covers 25 and 25, we get 4250, mm -hmm. then 4250 we divide by 100, the spacing plus 1 so it shall be 42.5 plus 1 it shall be 43.5 so say 44 so here it should be 44 bars each bar should be 3.725 then we get the total length in linear meters so we shall go to seeing how do we enter these quantities in a bill of quantities all right so a bill of quantity usually have an item number a description the quantity unit rate uh-huh we know up to there then we have the amount here so we shall start with the concrete work uh the concrete work we had taken off we shall take the description just as it was in the taking off sheet uh it is mass concrete for slab mixed grade to be determined we had not been told in the question which is the mixed grade so we shall write to be determined then uh the quantity we shall go back to where we uh we did take off so the concrete mass concrete was in terms of volume and we got 4.52 
meter cubic. So once we come to the bill of quantity, we shall add, we shall just insert 4.52, it is in cubic meters. The reinforcement uh, we usually cost uh, price the reinforcement according to number of kilograms. Okay, so we shall start with the T10 because it's the smaller one. So T10 is the smaller one in diameter. T10, uh, the total length was 160.18 meters. How do we determine the number of kilograms uh, given the diameter of the bars? We usually take, uh, we take the, the volume of each reinforcement bar. You see, uh, the cross section is circular for the reinforcement bar. So to find the volume of that bar, we shall take pi r squared times the total length of these bars, the total length that we have got. Once we get the volume of each bar, we multiply by the density of steel. We shall get the total kilograms of that reinforcement bar. All right. So we shall take pi times r. You see T10, diameter is 10. So the radius shall be 5 millimeters. So 0 0.005 5 squared times the length of the total length of the bars is 160.18. That one is the volume. Then we shall multiply by the density of steel so that we can be able to get the total mass of the bars. All right. So uh, we go to T12. The T12, uh -huh, we got T12. Uh, we did it here, T12. So we got 78.84 meters. So it is 78.84. What is the volume of uh, the, the total length of the bars? Pi r squared times the total length. All right. So 3.14 times 0 0.006 squared times the total length of the bars. Then we multiply by the density of steel to get the total mass of the bars. All right. So that is what we come and and enter in the bill of quantity so next we shall just come and enter the rate then we shall multiply the quantity by the rate to get the amount of each item all right so that one uh, we have been able to take off the mass the the concrete and also the reinforcement in slabs uh in case you have any question kindly type it so that you can answer it all right